I am inside of a Jupyter notebook here, and I have this little widget from the draw data library. It's a little trick that I maintain. Um, and this allows me to just draw a data set real quick. So I can just uh, kind of have a thick marker here, and uh, lo and behold, I've got a data set. Later in the video, this is going to be extremely useful, but for now, I'm just gonna uh, use this data set to explain a phenomenon, and then later we can uh, change the data set relatively quickly. Because the thing with this widget that's just kind of nice is that there is this uh, copy CSV button that I can click. And uh, if I were to scroll down now, you can also see that I've got some extra code over here. Um, and this extra code is using the pandas read clipboard uh, function. And you can see that uh, the thing that I've drawn over here uh, now just kind of nicely appears inside of a uh, matplotlib chart. So. With that introduction out of the way, what is this video about? Well, this video is about predictions that you could make on a data set like this one. Because it might be the case that this is part of a regression task. Uh, that is to say, uh, we would like to make a prediction uh, that predicts uh, this y value over here given this x value. And you can kind of see from a distance that um, this might be a linear regression line that kind of goes through here. Uh, and maybe a line like this uh, will be the prediction for a regression task. That's all well and good, but you're not always interested in a prediction that offers this single line. In a way, you could argue that this line is maybe the best summary that you can give, but this line is also pretty much the average, uh, and it kind of feels like there's a bit of a distribution on this axis over here. It's kind of like a normal distribution of sorts, and maybe we'd be interested in predicting the quantiles of this uh, distribution instead of just predicting the most uh, likely candidate. Put differently, um, maybe this is the uh, 50th quantile prediction. That is to say, from a normal distribution perspective, uh, this would be like the, the middle value over here. And maybe we'd also like to have a system that can predict uh, other quantiles around it. So maybe uh, we also want to have the 10% quantile and the 90% quantile, let's say, uh, which would correspond to uh, values over here that are just a little bit more towards the tail, I guess. Now, you can construct scikit-learn pipelines that do this, and there are a bunch of algorithms that you can apply right away, but all of these algorithms rely on something I like to call the quantile trick. And in this video, I would like to explain how a simple change uh, to a loss function can already cause an algorithm to perform this trick. And while doing that, we're also going to be playing around a little bit with different data sets and the effect on the quantile predictions. So I hope that that sounds like uh, fun. Okay, so let's consider a line that goes through the data like so. This is uh, what we will call a regression line. Then we'll have an algorithm that figures out the best line to draw here. And the way you do that is you calculate some sort of error over the prediction. Uh, one way of putting that, let's take this one data point as an example. Uh, you can see that there's a distance between the prediction, which is over here, uh, and the actual value that's over there. So to roughly describe that in a formula, you could say that there is some sort of error, uh, and the error is equal to the uh, predicted value, um, and you subtract from that the uh, actual real value, let's say. Now. There's an algorithmic detail here, um, which is that mathematically this error definition isn't great. Um, and that's because you can have an error that goes both ways. Um, some errors are negative with regards to the prediction and others are positive, you could say. So to put that more formally, we could say, well, we're dealing with a loss function instead. We're interested in the absolute difference uh, between the prediction uh, and the real number. The algorithm is going to add up all the loss values for each data point, and algorithmically, it's a lot nicer to just work with positive losses all over the place. So we could argue that this is a better loss function. So to describe what that loss function looks like in a chart, I suppose, let's say that here I've got my real uh, value that I'm supposed to predict, and then uh, I'm going to be making a prediction that's different from this real number. So let's say that I've got uh, a prediction over here. Well, then the loss, you could say, um, has a shape like this. Conversely, if I have a prediction on the other side over here, you kind of get the same picture because we are doing stuff with the absolute difference. 
But if I have a prediction on the negative side, uh, I will still get a loss. And if I have a predictive error on the other side, but the difference is as big, um, the loss would be as big at two. That's the, the rough thinking here. But this is also where we might be able to apply a bit of a trick. Because roughly, we could say that there are uh, negative predictions and positive predictions. That is to say, you've got some predictions on top of the line and you've got some predictions at the bottom. But what if we start treating that differently? So I'll just use a black marker for this. Let's say that if the loss is negative, we just give it a lower loss value. And if it's positive, we give it a slightly higher loss value. So in that case, a very small predictive error on this side would get a high loss nonetheless. But a very large predictive error on this side might only incur a very small loss, so to say. Well, as an effect, if the loss is different, then also the place where this line is is going to be different. We could adapt this loss function over here in such a way that we care more about values that are too big than too small, or vice versa. And hopefully you can also imagine how that just kind of moves this predictive line up and down. And that's a nice property because that's also relatively general. And this is what I like to call the quantile trick. As long as we have a machine learning algorithm that can optimize a loss that we can reweigh, so to say, then we will also get a prediction that is either higher or lower than the average. And that gives us a tuning knob to predict a quantile instead of this line in the middle. Now, just as a small tangent, uh, this loss function that you see here actually has a name. Uh, it's often called the pinball loss. And that's because the shape kind of reminds one of flippers inside of a pinball machine. So to make this a bit more tangible, let's just look at some code where I'm able to show this interactively. Okay, demo time. So there's a fairly big chunk of code over here. And I'm just gonna highlight a few of the important bits. I have code here that basically does a custom linear regression. I am uh, minimizing an error function that represents pure linear regression, like the line I just drew. But this cost function over here, well, that's just a little bit different because I'm saying if the error is negative, then we're going to apply a different weight to these errors than if they are positive. And the factor that we use to do this weighing that's something that you can pass interactively uh, using IPython widgets in this notebook. The rest of the code is going to become a bit more clear when I actually uh, do the interactive bit. So I'm just gonna run this and then uh, show you the good stuff. So what you see here are two charts. This is the data that I drew with this predictive line. And this is the loss function that I'm using. So this is the absolute loss. If, if there's no predictive error whatsoever, then the loss is zero. But the more I get to the positive end or the negative end of that zero, uh, the loss goes up. So far, so good. But let's now change the weighing factor over here. Let's uh, move that down a bit. When I do that, we saw that this line over here went up and we also see a corresponding change in this loss function. Now, the way to interpret this and also to uh, make the correspondence clear over here, this chart is telling me that Predictive errors where the real value was much higher than what we predicted, well, those get punished a lot. So that will be the stuff over here. These few data points, these weigh a ton. But all the stuff on this side that's lower, they don't contribute as much. And that is why we are pushing this line up. Conversely though, if I were to move this in the other direction, this gets flipped and we see the same phenomenon. There's a few points over here that cause an error, but this error weighs way more heavily than stuff on the other side. And it turns out that if you do the math, you can actually interpret this line as a quantile based on this weighing factor. And what we can also see here is that we can use a linear regression kind of technique to move the line around, which is very nice, but there are also other models that allow you to leverage this loss function trick. And for that, I have another demo. In this demo, there's again, a bunch of code. And again, I am using this uh, IPython widget, but now I am using 
actual scikit-learn models. I'm using the quantile regressor from the linear model module, and I'm using the hist gradient boosting regressor. Both of these two models have a quantile parameter that you can set, and that allows you to control which quantile that you're predicting. And just to give a demo of that, uh, I'm setting a quantile value here of 0 0.5 minus a margin, and I'm doing plus a margin over here. That's for the quantile regressor. And for the gradient boosted variant over here, uh, I'm setting the loss to a quantile loss, and I'm doing the same thing with the margin. So uh, let me just run this. I'll uh, go down. And then here you can see how the two models would make a prediction, but especially with the quantile trick. If I basically tell it that I want to have a very thin margin around the median, then you can see that there's not a whole lot of space. But the moment I introduce more and more margin, you can see how both models react. There are two different lines in the quantile regressor here, and you can kind of feel the trees that are being built um, in the boosted variant over here. But to really give a nice emphasis to this demo over here, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go back up to my drawing utility over here, and I'm going to reset it. And I'm just going to draw a very different uh, shape that I would like to uh, make a regression for. Right, so this is a way more complex regression thing at this point. I will then uh, copy this CSV. Then I will read my clipboard again, and uh, lo and behold, I have my data in pandas now. And if I then go back to my widget with this new data, you can also see a very nice example of how both of these two models just take a completely different approach to calculating the quantile, even though they both use the quantile trick. Here, we are really just doing a linear regression. While over here, we are actually doing stuff with these boosted trees. And one thing that I think is just particularly interesting is when I uh, increase this margin over here, then now you can clearly see that stuff gets wider. But in the boosted variant over here, you can also see that in places where there's not a whole lot of variance, the width is just a little bit smaller than in places where there is more variance. And I thought that was also just kind of nice to show. But under the hood, both of these models are really just doing a trick with the loss. Uh, we are able to pass in a factor that tells us uh, how much to weigh the left side versus the right side of the error. And by doing that, we kind of get these nice little quantiles. And these quantiles in practice can be incredibly useful because often you're not just interested in a point prediction, often you're interested in quantifying the uncertainty of a target variable. Um, and that's what these quantile losses uh, really allow us to do.